Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in probably the actual last episode of TNO Brave New World with a Code Talker update. I'm here also Mr. Mocha Lover, but we gotta talk about uh, the RSLP winning the government led by Anatoly Korogin. Um, and we're gonna read about the first focus, which is already done, the Korogin Presidency. Anatoly Korogin. Head of the RSLP has triumphed in the Russian election has been promoted or proclaimed President of the Russian Federation. With a new era of peace on the way after decades of warfare in Russia and abroad, it's time for the President to address his people and outline his agenda to Russia and the world. Uh, and peace is possible. The newly inaugurated President Korogin has many detractors. Some call his vision of peace and prosperity to be a fool's errand, merely a baseless ideal from which to draw the support of the gullible masses. These cynics may be well-intentioned and meaning to protect the Federation from pointless destructive policy, but this makes him no less misju misjudged and misguided. President Gorgian has laid out a comprehensive set of policies to bring a new era of peace. At the home front, working has cut spending and decentralized both the economy and nation are to become central points of domestic policy, while international cooperation and furthering relations with the OFM will become the foundation of foreign affairs. The president will have his work cut out for him, but he stands ready to see it through. We lose a lot of war support, which decrease inflation by 0.5%. Nice. Even though we are still at war with China, but, but, but whatever. Oh, pull shorts. Oh, an agenda. Join the OFN. Let's go back to military spending. Probably do that one. The all Russian armies throughout its history been a proud arm of the Federation and assessed it to its survival against all opposing the force single-handedly responsible for the liberation of the Russia from the, the that their German na their national daddiest jackboot. But as the winds of change continue to sweep the Federation, instead, fast duty becomes progressively more unneeded. Military spends become nothing but a sink in which billions of wasted rubles are dumped into. It be a disservice to continue waste to continue to wasting these funds so recklessly. The military budget will be considerably slashed and slapped into other programs, while which will anger in the ARPP and the more hawkish of the RAPP. It's a necessary uh, prerequisite for the paths to come, of course. Victory shall come. Ivan Korotov gazed down to the banks of the Ob. Tears gathered in his eyes across a small footbridge. A new era was beginning. Hope and freedom were no longer a myth. He watched the sunrise with a smile. Oh. And, of course, we're here, too. Um, we're trying to help these guys out as much as we possibly can. And beat the living shnikes out of them. And the Tholic Origin marched onto the podium where he would make his inauguration speech. His head was filled with sweat that quickly moved to, wipe, moved to quickly wipe away and tried to stop his hands from shaking. Taking quick glances, he stepped forward to the podium and focused his gaze on the Nova severe skyline. The sunrise conveniently marked the dawn of his time as president. He then looked down at the people. They were not inhabitants of feudal fiefdoms or warlord states, no, they were Russians. Taking the opportunity to wet his lips and swallow, he sealed himself and began to speak. Brothers and sisters of the land we call Russia, several months ago, I promise you prosperity, peace, and the second era of Russian happiness, should you have graciously. Uh, uh, place your faith into me and entrust me with the path, or with his post that we all cherish, the presidency of the Federation. Now I could say this. We've won and I'll not forget these promises. Why are there so many ends? The crowd assembled below erupted into deafening roars of pure joy and elation. Banners and flags went up in droves to encourage his position at least. A sea of white, red, and blue uh, rose up to greet him. For so long, Russia suffered under the yoke of one overlord after another. They've had time to burn and fester into our consciousness. We've all felt in our bones, wore our sort of families apart, destroyed our homes and livelihoods and cultures and our faiths. We've had to make all sorts of sacrifices for prosperity, but we have emerged on the other side of the tunnel and I look back on our struggles as a guide for the future. War is torn apart, now we must heal, and for that we must cast out our weapons and our hatreds. We must abandon this pretense of might makes right. We have to embrace future diplomacy and optimism. Our neighbors across the seas and our neighbors at home are now the enemies at the hand. Now, whilst Russians are still suffering the chains of poverty and injustice, we still have a long way to go. The crowd was silent for a moment before he raised a fist in the air and, the, and said words that sh uh, will reverberate in Russian history forever. The sun is risen, victory shall come. So we're doing all right. Um, I guess we're still going to keep finding these guys over here. Do we actually have any planes? Do we put us in any planes? No. All right, well, whatever. There we go. Have fun with it. Um, let's get in there and do a good job. Also, we have peace as possible. The mess of compromise. Corrigan took a sip of his coffee. That was a Turkish in origin, cut with a strong pour of milk and the slightest hint of sugar, just as he liked it. Once again, he traced his finger with the proposed route for his visit to the U.S., the leader of the free world, and other members of the OFM. Let me get this straight, he said. We're going to America in order to host a summit that could change the future of geopolitics. What do we do here? Well, either cement our legacy or destroy it, and you want me to waste time visiting a restaurant? So to get Karl Kavalev shrugged. It's called fast food, Mr. President, and I'll endear you to the Americans. They think eating a roadkill smash between two pieces of bread is endearing? Yes, God knows why, but my sources are clear on this. Kovalev pushes glasses back on the ridge of his nose. It's only one meal, Anatoly. Only one. Ah, uh, side. And then what? We have several press conferences scheduled with the President of the United States. There'll be nothing major. A translator will be provided. Do you think I need a translator? Do you think you need a translator? I'm assigning you one. Korjin balled his fist on his side. Fine. Sergei flipped to the next page of his itinerary before the summit. You'll be accepting honorary psychology degrees from several universities in America, Stanford, Harvard, and MIT. I'm honored, but... Sig, so, is this really all necessary? Turn the trip into a show, appeasing the public with nonsense? Yes, Kovalev slammed his pencil onto the table. America's curious. They want to see the peacemaker of Eastern Europe and the man who changed Russia on a fundamental level. You told me you want to get involved, so let's change the world. Well, to do that, you need their attention, so let's get this stupid attention. Politics is a circus, sometimes literally. No challenge too great. 
Oh, oh, whoa. No price to I. The prosperity of people remain present in accordance first and foremost the domestic policy goal. Russia's citizens must not be forgotten in the pursuit of a peaceful world, and this must be reflected in the Federation's economy and so social welfare. Government programs which protect people from being left destitute and impoverished are an absolute necessity to the nation must be expanded in mass. These programs will not be without their cost, but this may be making up, made up for in part by reallocating the budget of other government sectors such as the military. It cannot be promised that these cuts will even out, but the people of the Federation must take a priority to a few petty rubles. Of course, of course, of course. The nation's future lies in its army. Export solidarity, not just the politicians, but that of the working people too. Probably better. It'll get better. It's completely unacceptable, Anatoly. If you have Gandhi put him a cop face back and forth within the presidential cabinet, it's a coup against their national security. The ARPP will not stand for this. Anatoly Korjan gave him his pinning smile. With all due respect, if Gandhi, your party is a little saying this. I've set the course. If we are to lead the world to peace, we must start by constructing an example. Can't do this with an extensive military industrial complex plaguing the nation. The leader of the all Russian patriotic party sat from exhaustion and finally collapsed into a chair. Are you insane? He wiped the sweat from his forehead. It's ridiculous. It's not even about the bloody ability to project power in our sphere, but this is a baseline long term security for people. Are we to hope that some madman like uh, Hitler won't take power again and try to slaughter our of people? These people that you're trying to weaken, do you know how many they think they you, they employ? Do you know how many lives because of them? Uh, do you think this is as easy? Cordian shrug is a very short sighted and ignorant tank, Evgeny. War hungry warlords can operate under a uh, constant burden of international obligations and treaties. If the world sees what prosperity br peace brings, no one will permit the governments to waste their taxes on military adventures. Not only their populations, but ours. These very adventures made your, your democracy. Put him a cup, slam a fist on the table, look at Asia. Look at the Middle East. Look at the darn state of Europe. Do you think the other superpowers will be as stupid as they'll let themselves be disarmed and train their people not to further their geopolitical interests? You're forcing Russia to become a lamb, a lamb that will be slaughtered by those who do not follow your pretentious nonsense. I merely intend to train society with some empathy, to perceive others as they perceive themselves. Human beings shouldn't have the terrors of war inflicted upon them for foolish pretenses of strong manning nations for our, arbit our arbitrary interests. Others will come around. Empathy is infectious. It just needs an example. Brumikov stood up, and anyhow, I can't overturn you, President. Let's hope this utopia of yours won't keel over and die the slight breeze, God forbid, as human beings must wrestle the future from their hands. As we empower the corporations. Huh. <laughs> um, Kantorovich's mind. Expand the republics. Good Delhi to Washington. That'd all be too nice. That'd be really nice to do, actually. Um, not bad. Shukshin's heart. Well, promote decentralization. A great federation struggle with the centralization of power and since its founding. And control. Under Pokrushkin, mega corporations in the lead dominate all facets of the economy, and while Shukshin took many measures to cut the corporate influence, they remain far too vital for a nation's economic workings. While industrial giants have their place, it's not as, com not as a commanding force of an entire nation's economy. Industry and commerce shall be decentralized and economically, economically devolved to smaller companies and businesses. No more will the nation be bogged down by the corporate and governmental regulation and dominance. The market shall reign supreme and unshackled. What are we doing here? Oh! We can't do anything. Oh, god dang it. Go Shnikes. They're actually doing really well, look at that. North Western government. Nice job so far. I can forget. And we don't have Romania with us now, which is weird, but you know, whatever. I guess they did give a. a oh, Odessa back. Yeah. Weird. Take a look, see. Well, we're still at war, so happy May, everybody. 30% growth. Uh, we did. Uh, uh, te war taxes, of course. Temp tax, I like to get some sort of surplus. Not bad. Not bad. We keep getting more point one billions. I'm okay with that. How's this happening? Can we do it again? Darn it. That was really nice. Uh, prepare our diplomats. With the goal and set and intentions clear, it's time to begin the first step towards integrating the Federation completely into the free world. Corrigan, the foreign minister of COVID level, will travel across the democratic world to submit commitments to the international cooperation and peace. While at home, our politicians will battle tooth and nail to protect their agenda against socialist agitators and the conservative strongmen. The RSLP has Russia's best interests in mind, and we must remind our people of such, even if it takes a little convincing to get them on board. Absolutely. A deli to there. Oh, we have more production units? Wow. Very nice. The gold mood. So, this is no chance to grape. There is no means that, uh, to the end of peace, which can be ignored. Cooperation around um, or, or the world must extend beyond diplomacy and the culture and the end of the economy, and most of all, in the sciences. A global effort to further the progress of all mankind, if it is to succeed, it must be done with the aid of all nations of the world. International cooperation with all the nations who pioneer the development of science must be pursued. Coordination of research and sharing scientific developments will propel the advancement of science at a speed to which it has never before been seen. Humanity will look to the future for the betterment of all who dreamed of a better tomorrow, and we cannot fail. The mess of compromise. Coordination of his coffee. No Turkish in origin. Oh wait, there is one already. 
Um, yeah, we read this one earlier too. So politics as a circus, sometimes literally. Well, okay, that's the same one then. Oh, crap! Russia's relation with the orphan is subpar. Conservatives are strongly against them. Socialists are strongly against. <coughs> Showcase Russian culture. Uh, the orphan up to this point is almost if not entirely made of countries traditionally considered part of the West. In addition, due to decades of chaos within the former Soviet Union, Americans and their allies paid little attention to Russia up until very recently. Therefore, a biased cosmopolitan exists amongst the people of the free world whose stereotypes hinder our efforts to join them. We must break through this underlying subconscious orientalism ever to join the American disappears. Uh, OFN has been the most reclusive to foreign powers, and they have very good reason for doing so. However, President Gordon's reputation as a peacemaker precedes him and his followers. Though we love peace, the RSLP understands the necessity to defend freedom from the horde of fascism. Visiting OFN military installations will signal that the Russians are ready to learn and engage in further cooperation with OFN militarily. Uh, true the, oh, uh, free world. Uh, throughout the history, very few Russian rulers cho chose to venture beyond the borders of our motherland. Indeed, there may be too many works at hand, but let us not forget before our shukshin. They are another great leader of the Russian people embrace his Western friends, and together with them vanquish his foes. Gorgon will follow the footsteps of Peter the Great towards the bastions of freedom in the West. Spread trade links. Ooh. Apart from the Second West Russian War, the main hub of a Russo-American relations was tr or trade was Magadan. Though a grand port was a result uh, of multiple expansions, the vast distance between it and the major population centers rendered it ineffective. However, now that rule has been cemented in Western Russia, more seaward trading routes have become available, such as Murmansk and St. Petersburg, with little nudge in our tariffs and policies. A never ending stream of Russian freighters and sailors will speak louder than any of our diplomats. Apply for Wolfen membership. Uh, Russia was thought to be a manifestation of the East. A wild, rabid step that mother that mother is the eternal enemy of the Western civilization. So it was thought that the Russian Federation would become an enemy as potent as the German Reich once was to the United States and its friends. President Corrigan has smashed stereotypes harbored by many international political analysis. Instead of rivalry, Russians have only grown closer to the Western world as a friend of democracy. We have veterans. Uh, many veterans of the War of Unification and the subsequent uh, Second West Russian War chose to oppose the efforts of the RSLP to join the OFN, mainly due to the concerns over Russian sovereignty after our incorporation to the OFN. They and the general public must understand that Russia can and will stand on equal footing. Russian moderates, uh, some moderate members of the ARPP, are concerned about the potential damage to the Russian economy. They understand that Russia will certainly choose to integrate into the global Western market, but fears the potential loss of jobs as a result of globalization. We'll make it abundantly clear that while we respect while we respect our friends, not even the Americans may hurt our working class. We could do that one. Or we could do endorse pro OFN propaganda. <coughs> awesome. Um, uh, we'll make use of any political propaganda within and without the country to pressure our opposition. While the ARPP may attack our party for selling out of the nation, selling out the nation, we must stress how much the Americans have aided us throughout the struggle. Producing films and documentaries highlighting the brotherly bond between our countries will sway some of the less hardcore nationalists. And appease corporate executives. Oh. A DSPR will really hate us for this. Many businessmen won their place in Russia simply because they copied American models, and therefore fear what will happen once the American competitors start to pour resources into the Russian market. While it is desirable, we must reach compromises with these leading companies, especially in protecting Russian businesses so they won't become mouthpieces of ARPP. Promise worker concessions. Appealing, appeasing workers and trade unions of indigenous Russian businesses is critical. While, many, while they are ruthless capital scum that we too wish to fall apart, we must understand that open up to the West will inevitably hurt the honest working Russians, which contributed to our most successful bid for the presidency. We mustn't rock the boat even as Russia further increases its trade ties with the U.S., Canada, and their allies. Reach out to the disenfranchised. The U.S., despite all its political discourse, has been a model democracy, one that Russia is still learning from. Many of the DSPR's supporters either belong to the minority or are feeling the government has not done enough to extend freedom and autonomy as they want it. To deprive them of support, we should use a governmental and party media to hint that the RSLP's willingness to adopt Western and federal models and other democratic institutions. Discredit that radical communists. The CPRF and some of the less than savory authoritarian factions of the DSPR have been attacking the RSLP regime for its preparation to import capitalist misery and chaos from America into the Russian Federation. However, one will be quick to see Corrigan's plans include nothing of the expo exploitative part, and has been working at international fraternity more than the communists have ever done so. Acknowledge past mistakes. <coughs> In the past, the syllabi gave to persecute the predecessor of the DSPR, the Gnarled Necks were heavily oppressed by the past regime, which led to many avoidable tragedy. Now that a new, more humane party is in charge, we should try to work to rehabilitate and apologize to the victims of the Silviki's behalf. Although the DSPR will appreciate this gesture, the ARPP will dislike us as they would further, without a doubt, believe that we're trying to further discredit their legitimacy. So, decrease by 5, increase by 15, so really by 10 each. We do 100 and 100. Uh, we do both. And we'll probably keep doing, we might just see the consequence for all this stuff to make sure we can do this done, get this done, so. Uh, conservatives, anything else down here? Okay, so the ARPP is campaigning against them. Uh, if not completed in 20 days, ARPP is a decree. Oh, goes up by 10, Jesus! Yeah, I'm gonna use consequence for political power. I don't screw I don't care anymore. Um, against the voters, is. Oh, to talk, to, we'll have to talk to them. Oh, we need to talk about both these guys, okay. 
His plan to destroy the free world, huh? To go to the mood? Wait, when do we plan our tour? Oh, we do that over here. Oh, New Hope. Oh, if you want to buy a New Hope, please go ahead. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But this dude, to go to the mood, I guess? The Western states of China have been the last bastion of Eastern Asian freedom for decades, but throughout their time struggling to return freedom to the nation, they have remained isolated diplomatically and cut off from the world with only minor recognition and aid from the OFM. State affairs cannot continue. President Gorgians to take leave on a safe visit to free Chinese capital of Gomud. Sitting at this offering of peace is sure to give the Federation a stronger diplomatic hold in Asia and force the rising sun and its puppets to reconsider the state of the supposed hegemony in the region. If a request for peace is to spread to Asia, it must begin here. Land of rice and salt. The jet began to send on the once distant mountains grew larger. The lands were far a cry from the harsh terrain of the motherland, a different type of beauty, serene rather than unforgiving. The belied the scars wrought upon the land the people for the past century. Corrigan stepped down from the jet alongside Kovalev and gre being greeted by an entourage of villagers and Kumontang soldiers. They were then quickly led to the nearby village. The houses were made of wood and stone, a stark contrast to the concrete forests of Russia. They felt strangely cozy despite the apparent austerity of the situation. They soon entered a quaint house and set it a round table covered by a simple tablecloth. They were soon joined by members of the Chinese general staff. The dishes were served, steaming with a heavenly smell that weft, waved through the house. The affair was simple, but sumptuous. As they ate, they discussed the extent to which both states could cooperate militarily with each other from equipment purchases to covert war games in the Far East. President Corrigan, we are uh, truly honored that you have dined to cooperate with us on a small statelet. <clears throat> Both of our nations have been dismantled by fascism, but yours has risen once more to heights never before was seen by the Russian people. But China lies broken, shackled and splintered by the Japanese bandits, of course. We will do our utmost to fight for the liberation of the people, but without external support. Um, it seems unlikely to even to the most optimistic of us. <clears throat> General, you, we've never forgotten our struggle against the Nazis and how we face the same despair at, this, at times at overwhelming odds that we had to surmount. Uh, and now that we have triumphed, of course, we have understand the difficulty of doing so. We too face. A common enemy in the Japanese, and a greater one in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the city's shadow of fascism. You will not let the we will not let the last back beacon of hope in China sputter out. You have our full support. How is that? Thank you, President Corrigan. Thank you. Until Washington, the United States has stood us stood, up, stood unquestionably as a leader of the free world since the end of the Second World War. Our sudden victory over the force of Nazism has cemented the democratic ideals of our Federation for years to come, accomplishing what even America could not do decades earlier. With Corrigan's diplomatic expertise and our near bottomless international goodwill, we'll send our president of the land of the free to foster a new equal partnership between our great Federation and the United States of America. And then, of course, to Delhi. The Republic of India has suffered much under the rule of the so-called civilized West. From brutal colonial crackdowns and massive deadly famines, the Indian subcontinent has seen the very worst successes of European imperialism. While Russia used to bear the title of an empire, it was born itself in a new age of democracy under the title of Federation. Far removed of the days of the great game, from our present reality, from now on, we must move forward with Delhi on even grounds, where democratic Cal and Orient can prove the tipping point of the battle, east, battle against the Japanese imperialism in the East. Culture shock. And we're still doing this stuff too, we'll get the, this one later on. As Gorgian and Kovalev stepped into the car, it can help but go over the last few days ahead of him once more. Uh, or a uh, few of the days ahead of him. Not last few days, but ahead of him for now. Meeting with the OFN delegation, members, senators, congressmen, so on, suits and ties that come with the best intention, but usually fall, shall, uh, fall short. While the car drove into D.C., Corrigan thought about life in America. It seemed peaceful, though there is tension in the air surrounding the newest president, Gus Hall, who was an open communist. Or Ella Baker, really. Corrigan felt apprehensive, but ultimately thought he shouldn't make too many judgments before meeting him. As he stepped out of the car, looked at the road up ahead to see a, a horde of brown shirts on Pennsylvania Avenue. <clears throat> Had a crowd of people marching up it, directly towards the White House. Corrigan, bodyguards began ushering him away, but he wanted to see what they were marching about. Even though Corrigan couldn't understand English beyond pleasantries, he could recognize the protesters when he saw one. The signs that held slogans like, Call me out of the White House, not USA, not USSR, Yaki was right. Corrigan began to back away when the two bands pulled in front of the crowd and riot police poured out. They started ruthlessly beating the protesters who retreated back up the way they came. At the same time, members of the American Secret Service walked up and began escorting them to the first meeting. Gorgian could only feel worried about what might happen in America. A population so divided by politics cannot remain intact. The Russians knew that this better than anyone else. He thought back to the quote from Abraham Lincoln, a house of violence against itself cannot stand. Land of the free, home of the brave. We're all killing each other. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that stuff for now. To Delhi, and then Brothers Who's Suffering. The story of the Allies is one of suffering, defiance, and the most of all conviction. Millions still suffer, or still remember the day the swastika flew over the Red Square, or the evacuation from the British Isles, as a defining image of the Second World War. One of the unstoppable fascist uh, dominance uh, over the, br the brave but ultimately hopeless Allied resistance. This is reading weird. It is undoubtable since that then that Russia has experienced the brunt of genocidal fascist imperialism with the millions of our own perishing in the name of German living space. But without the open standing as a unifying beacon of resistance against our moral enemies, what could have stood between the Axis and complete world domination? 
We owe much of the current rise of the tenacity of Washington's resistance. Just as Washington owes the fall of the Reich's hegemony to our continued struggle, together in purpose and strength. The Allies all stand together stronger than ever. United not only by ideological determination, but by the soldiers that rest beneath our soil. So. Oh, give military access, huh? non aggression pact. Get a lot more political power. Open influence will increase by five. That's cool. Yeah. And these guys are still killing them over there. They're doing an okay job. They're doing it in a very weird way, though. Just don't lose too much. Are you, are you fighting here? No. G Kong? Corner Fox. Oh, okay. Well, they're still trying. They're still trying. And to Delhi, my friends. <coughs> into the Orient. Corrigan and Kovalev stepped off the jet onto the Indian soil for the first time in their lives. It was humid day, and they were very much unused to the moisture of the land. So close. To yet so unlike Russia. Good afternoon, President Corrigan and Minister Kovalov will bring you to the Taj Mahal to see one of the few intact wonders of the world. The pair turned their heads towards a well-built man wearing a white turban. My name is Harshan Singh. I will be your translator and guide during your trip. We'll be discussing our shared interest in the Taj Mahal, Mr. Singh, considering its background, just so to say, said Kovalev. Well, don't you want to be in Delhi around this time of year? Well, you don't want to, Mr. President. They want to present themselves minus a few. The two men then stepped into an unmarked car, their bodyguard, and the translator and drove off to the white tomb. The streets of Agra were weathered and tanned by the feet of millions in the ceaseless gaze of the sun. The people of Uttar Pradesh lived in conditions a little better than the a of the average Russian despite avoiding the ravages of war. Do people not have enough to feed themselves? Why is it that they find difficulty fi uh, feeding the families? Vast are our fields and stalwart are their, our hearts, but the land would give little. I imagine India has not reached her full potential. Well, we may do change the lives of many. Maybe, Mr. President, maybe. The ride then settled into silence once more as the Taj Mahal drew closer. Corrigan could not but think of the sheer contrast between the crowned ancient city and the opulent monument, rather than its exquisite Mughal architecture filled with the brilliant jewels. A tomb far more splendorous than houses of a million living, to think of what could have been done to haunt the president, but his lingering mind was enough to buy a tap on the shoulder by Kovalev. President Corrigan, I am Defense Minister Pilavi, and I will be uh, forthright. The solution which you, Mr. President, have brought forth here could benefit both nations greatly if we had additional deterrents. Corrigan sighed, we would be amenable to cooperate closely with the milit India's mil militarily, but as for a guarantee, that would be much harder to agree to. Whilst it could be seen as agitating, we, are, we here are less fortunate than the people of Russia. With the Japanese forces still on the borders, they could very well repeat what happened back in the 50s. Let people will prosper too, knowing that they're in safe hands. Uh, fair, I think we can work on that in some other ways too. The Green Revolution shall change any forever. We will spend 7.5 billion, Jesus. Agriculture will rapidly improve. GDP growth will increase by 10%. Academic base will begin to improve. Oh, wow. Andy's going to get a lot of buffs. Apathetic, huh? We have near universal support. Near universal support, huh? Well, we're still doing that. So, uh, surplus still not bad. A lot of growth still. Let's lower that growth. Barely. Barely lower the growth. You know what? Even if we could, I don't I don't want to do that yet. Acknowledge past mistakes. Now they're both apathetic, I think. Whatever. Brothers who suffering. <coughs> the sun shone brightly over the vast blue skies of Moscow. It was the perfect scene from which to unveil the newly constructed memorial. A crowd of the hundreds uh, gathered around the towering statue of a Russian soldier, standing proudly at attention, hoisting the flag of his beloved Russia above his head. Beside him stood an American soldier, firmly saluting as well, and raising the flag of the United States to a flu with the banner of the Federation. A touching piece is sought by most passerbys. Among the pedestrians walking past, there were smiles, tears, and moments of silent remembrance. Yet through it all, there were more harsh remarks that were heard from the back of the crowd. Veterans, outraged at the thought of an American coward made an equal to those who had truly liberated Russia amongst the crowd. The rage was understood, but none dared to interrupt the cries or give them solace. As time passed by, the outcry dissipated, and his place was not a contempt or anger, but silence. A voice of sore condition of the feeling which encapsulated all who looked to the monument, a feeling that many believed to be lost to time. Peace. And the silence rise became drawn to the platform beside the memorials, a gathering of men in suits and ties made the way to the middle of the platform, where President Corrigan stepped out from the middle of all of them to give his commemoration speech. I'll leave you all with the words of a great man from our brothers across the sea to remember as we enter a new age of prosperity and freedom. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Thank you. The crowd erupted into celebration from a joyless joyfulness that had been felt on the streets of Moscow since the dates of its celebration. The veterans of the crowd grit their teeth in quiet anger but stayed their word in a brief moment of respect towards those who wished to celebrate a moment even they cannot deny the importance of. Not long after midday, uh, ambassadors from all corners of the free world shook hands together and gathered for a picture in front of the memorial. Democracy had won over the horrors of the Nazis. Through blood, tears, uh, toil, and sweat, they triumphed over all, and together they sang a song to victory evermore. Peace in our time. Partners with circumstance. While it's true that we share a strong ideological bond with our American counterparts across the ocean, in the end it's our economic and military status to keep our relationship an equal one. 
During that warlord era, it was a Slovakia that pushed for the increased trade links with OFM. Hoping to increase the power and recognition of the North Vosibirsk conglomerates, a dominator of up until the Second West Russian War. Today it's our federation that stands all over Europe, and the OFM is up and keen to sit out on potential profits. Under present cordium, we will take our economic relationship to the new heights, empowering the dollar and the ruble side by side. Nice. Much better good too. North West governments. Uh, get some more growth, war sport, they get stuff, everyone gets more stuff. So they get a little more inflation, we get more growth. Our inflation is increasing by 0.15, but we get even more growth too. Well, that's not bad. Our place in the free world, our time is arrived, further than cordial. One seems nothing more than a naive idealist, not fit to run a nation's populace and land or people as a federation. Has not only secured the support of its own people, but the support of the entire democratic world. Broadcast from within in the halls of the Federal Assembly and up for the beers. Admission into the oil organization, Free Nations. Will be plastered onto every TV screen in not just Russia, but the United States as well. Our politicians will shake hands with American counterparts. As the streets roll and cameras roll, showcasing in real time our dedication to the international cause of freedom and prosperity, as promised at the very beginning of our presidency. Nice. Remove CTS oh, member, huh? Add independent member of the OFN. Adds annual growth rate factor 10%. Oh, yeah. Nothing like back home. Crap, the sharp noise of the building entrance draws U.S. Private Matthews full attention as he gazes down the door. It's freaking cold, the, colder than Jack Frost's dead body outside. The private's corporal run that out breathlessly as he swiftly, clo swiftly closed the door with the force of two men. Ah, uh, no, it's not from Montana. This good, sir, is a normal day for me in December. Matthew entered sneered at the corporal, California born and New Mexican raised. Ron's response was nothing more than a nasty side eye aimed straight into uh, Matthew's iris. If it ain't so bad, I want you to take the hat coat off and run two laps around the barracks. The corporal barked back. Matthew snide, uh, smiled, dissipate, dissipated as he hurriedly retreated his eyes from Ron's glare and back of the letter he had received from his mother earlier that day, which lay on the table. Lurching towards a nearby chair, Ron didn't bother to take off his coat as he sank his exhausted body in the seat. He lit a cigarette in a de desperate attempt to claim enough body heat to make up for what he had lost. Well, oh, everyone leaves all of that, huh? Um, once again, at the crack of the door, shifted both men's attention towards who had just entered their brief uh, respite from the cold, and walked Adar, sporting a short sleeve t shirt. Friends, what seems to be the problem? We wear coats and stuff, but you have a heater, no? Now, Edar wore the infuriatingly coy smile, darting his eyes back and forth to both men who shared the same confused yet defeated expression. Well, with a warm smile, Edar jeered, Come, my friends, we still have a drill in 15 minutes, just outside. He gleefully chuckled out his two colleagues' flush red faces and tapped the corporal on the shoulder. Hey, no need, no need to feel so embarrassed, yes? At least you are not Australian. Uh, Edar pointed to the squad of Australians on the way back from a march, whose tan faces bore their look of defeated, half frozen men. Ron and Matthew. Um, felt the weight of the next drill sinking in on them as Adar waved farewell and swung the door open. Adar still slightly longer than he should have, leaving both men once again sh shivering and feeling his own. Frostbite was set in at any moment. Can we go home yet? Where are we at for this? Cordial. Excellent, nice. Are in favor. Well, we could try it now. Huge increase in opinion. Why not? Work concessions would be bad to do either. Because now we can't do anything else. Our place in the free roll would be good, though. How's it looking over here? Uh, they're slowly getting there. But happy October now. Well, debt GDP... Well, I mean, we're taxing the hell out of everybody. But, like, we're cutting down that debt. 17% growth. That ain't bad. 57.8%, not bad. 13, 15, almost 16. Inflation is swinging higher up. We did go back to uh, counter pennies with 2.335%, but that's not bad too. And I did minimize education or science spending expenditure because at this point it doesn't really matter. I have been finding we want to tax as many people as possible, get more stability and whatnot, so. And military spending, good. Max that out, max that out. Lower that, because, I mean, at this point it doesn't really matter for that stuff. Over there, in favor. Where's this one? Expand trade links. Um, it's going against it, going against it. Um, well, they almost got it there. So I might have to wait until we get that one done. So after that one, Shukshin's heart. Well, maybe. Um, Vasily Shukshin is undoubtedly the most popular man in all of the Federation. Through his leadership, Russia managed to prove what none thought was possible to estimate the National Socialist Colossus and liberating all the enslaved peoples who inhabited their colonial states. We may stand against the blind idealism of President Corgin, the former writer showing sympathy for a quest of peace. With no clear intention of running against us in the future, it may prove wise to utilize a mass support base in our favor. Kantorovich's mind. Of all the parties which constituted the Shukshin's original coalition, there were none other more than odds with our, our agenda than Kantorovich's Democratic Socialists. 
The heavy-handed economic tactics and over-enthusiastic spending put them in a position of staunch opposition to our policy, however. President Gordon believes there's room for compromise. If our policies are to succeed, we must rally the support of all who stand opposed to the ARPP and their refusal to cooperate with their goals. The RSLP continues to stand as an underdog of the doom, and so the support, if very hesitant, of the DSPR must be pursued. We must find common ground for peace and good the common man, of course. So we're there. Conservatives are there. Um, we're talking with this guy. Now, we're going about talking with Kantorovich. Kantorovich, please go ahead. I don't know why I'm struggling so much to just say a stupid name right now. Um, this is what it is. Oh, this guy's in peace out, so it looks a lot better now, but whatever. And we have to get conservatives here, too. Which I don't understand why we can't get them. It looks like we should have enough. A, a plea between rivals. Kantorovich poured himself a drink in his guest, and totally gorgeous. They are still the man that opposed everything he and his party stood for. Once they may have been partners, but in the end, there was nothing but another arm of the corporate monopolies. A collaborator against the working class with the audacity to see compromise with the servant of the people. Still gorgeous. Uh, I attempted to plead with them. Kantorovich, please, I know how you and your party may think of me, but uh, I do not bow to corporations like some rich men's do. They are undoubtedly evil, make no mistake, but a necessary one. You slander me in your campaigns for a crime I've never committed. I am the fighting for the real peace, for the sake of prosperity, not for a paycheck, and I would work with honorable men like yourself to achieve it if you'd only let me do so. Kantorovich scoffed. You can give me the same spiel as your voters of peace all you want, yet for all your talk of ideals and greater good, you oppose the very thing required for prosperity, advancement of the common men, not you and your cronies. Kantorovich, please, you must... Uh, you misunderstand my thought. No, Anatoly, I understand quite clearly. I'm afraid we will not be able to come to an agreement. Cordial pause for a moment, silent before sighing and attempting to bounce back into the conversation. Lenin, I know we do not see eye to eye, but I think for a moment, would you like to see a Primakov and his goons succeed in tearing down all the work you've, we've done just for the sake of my own expense? Kantorovich nearly barked back a retort, but he stopped himself. Primakov was a very different case to the man beside him. Gorgian was an appeaser to corporate interests, perhaps, but Primakov was truly a corporate puppet. To refuse Gorgian's support would to allow the Siloviks to gain the upper hand in government. The social liberals were just not perfect, but if aiding them in slopping, or even even if just from further harm, the destruction of the rights of the worker, maybe, just maybe. Kantorovich turned Gorgian, and Anatoly. I think, you may think your policies are perfect, but I do not wish to see the, retur see the return of our federation we fought so hard to leave in the past. If you will stop, put him a cop, you have the support of the DSPR. Um, that's nice. That's our experience is nice. Veterans. They're still working against us. Um. Uh. How are we supposed to get this one? Is it, this is bugged. I have a chat with the man himself. Yeah, it's bugged. So, but then expand the republics. Enough of Beards can borrow on the Federation's earliest days, a federal model of governance upon which our state was founded, was used as a pragmatic method to ease administration in a time of war. However, today serves a different purpose. The many minorities and peoples of Russia call for freedom of self-determinism, and it's our duty to give it to them. Pokorushkin's uh, uh, vision of solely a practical administrative divides was truly and finally be laid to rest. The republics and other autonomous provinces in a great federation will finally have their rightly owned autonomy. And be given the right to choose their own de destiny, free of the federal overstep, for it is their right as free citizens just as any other. Heart and soul. As Gorgian entered the office, he was met by a plethora of sites from years past. A copy of the Voting Rights Act was hung near a photo of two men laughing beside a jet of Gorgian recognizes the federation's two ex-presidents. The man with his hair flying in the wind looked so much younger than he appeared now behind the desk in front of Gorgian, though President Shukshin is still the same optimistic grin. After a brief hello, Scorgeon sat at the end of the desk opposite Shukshin and spoke with a tense smile. Vasily, I'm glad to see you are well, but I'm afraid we must keep the pleasantries. I'm sure you know there's no secret that half the doom is out to throw my administration through the wolves before it's gone off the ground. The good luck as it is cannot be broken without more political backing, and I've come to ask for your support. Shukshin leaned into the chair and sighed, his smile faltering for a moment, and until your idealism has never been well suited to politics. I would admire how persistent you are if it wasn't so asinine. I've, if I've learned anything from my time in your position, it was that pleasing everyone is never feasible. You need some backbone or you won't get much further. Vasily, please. It just isn't practical, Shukshin uh, retorted. I understand your strength and your beliefs, but if you want to get anywhere you need to, Corjin shot back his voice for rising. Practical? If he followed only what was practical, that man, the man he jammed a finger towards the foot of Pokrushkin on the wall, was still be in office. For Vasily, you dragged us out of the anarchy in the dirt, picked a fight with the global superpower, and won. It was idealism that got us to where we are. You have, you have pull, and you have connections. Darn it, I, if I, need, I need your help. If we want to stop Perimikov and his thugs from undoing your work. Shukshin was silent for a long moment. You're not necessarily wrong. Perhaps my age is beginning to show my in my judgment, he chuckled. I like Primakov and his corporate parasites no more than you do. If your initiatives will stop them, I'll help you. You may be naive, but you know in your soul what is right. And for that, I commend you. The two shook hands as Corjin left. Shukshin wondered if his ideals were so unachievable after all. The passing of the torch, of course. And here we are. A billion in surplus every year. Inflation is really bad. Wow, it's really, really bad. Less factory output. Inflation actually really has a direct effect on your economy, so... As base inflation rates are really huge, really massive. So 2.6% is not bad. 13% growth, but 
Still. Doing this will do like nothing. Actually, if anything, you made our surplus worse. What the heck? Ah, the Russian Federation Russian Federation joins the OFM. Uh, President Court is officially announced in conjunction with the broadcast from the Wash during the Federal Assembly in Novosibirsk, Russia has entered into the Organization of Free Nations. With the end of the Second Russian War came the reception of free elections in the Federation, introducing the pacifists, led by the supposed Dark Horse candidate Anatoly Korjin, into the seats of power. Leading by a promise of increased international cooperation and reduction in military spending, the RSLP made great efforts to reach out to other so called bastions of democracy, increasing regional commitments, and expanding economic links through trade. While well, some see the announcement as a renewed confirmation of Washington's grip on the free world, there is no doubt that Russia's entry into the organization will substantially increase its presence around the globe. While the racket in flames and Japan's fear facing ever increasing resistance in its dominions, this act has merely solidified the new global alliance for hopefully democracy, for Brian Prospect's alliance and a trip to Barnall. Barnall is a junior member of the duo which constituted the Federation's initial territory, but makes it no less important the legacy for a great government. And the city remains an abundance of government history and documents which could prove useful to President Corrigan's policy agenda. Now that the President's initial most pressing pieces of his platform have begun to be seen, been seen through, he shall return to where Shukshin's feder movement against the Vasiliviki began. The Federation continues to work, look ever more ahead, but we must respect how it began, and there would be no better way than to look to Barnall. Cool. So we have quite a few days left, so now we're 15 still. More growth, which is nice. Economic sphere is... Well, it's not quite right. Our sphere, which we thought we just joined the OFN, is 175 billion, which is not bad. But when this Republic, yeah, we're actually fourth now. We're above China. We're finally above China. That's actually really cool. Top 10 economies. Wait. Wait. America, what's going on? Why are you not in the top 10? Why is Japan leading the world in top economies? Uh, um, America, what's going on? I guess you're really communist, aren't you? I don't think they'd ever really elect a communist, but who am I to say? Um, 40 divisions. Hold on. So, Organization Free Nations. So, we actually did join the Organization Free Nations. Interesting. Well, that is that has got to be terrifying for Germany. Especially after they did... I mean, if they were still Nazis and stuff. But I guess they're pretty democratic. And Japan, though? Like, having us up here, after everything said we, like, help them out. Having us up here versus these guys, that'd be pretty terrifying, in my opinion. But, us, oh, so far with country. Ion, uh, Ion, or Ion, smiled at his son, who was carefully arranging a bunch of planks on the table. Oh, toy, you must place the hammer again. Better hope you haven't left it outside. A teenage uh, Yakut startled. His eyes widening and began to frantically search through the workshop. Ion shook it for a few moments, his eyes sparkling before pointing at the anvil. There, you hung on the edge. Oh, toy laughed. Oh, thank God, the last thing we need is another trip to the general store. We? Oui. Ion punched his son in the arm. I think you, need, you meant yourself. My bones are too old and lazy for that trip. Oh, toy picked up the hammer and a handful of nails. Uh, last time I was in Amalan, I heard some folks talking about uh, Moscow and the election. Don't pay them any mind, but Chokhan said, You shouldn't have flawed his opinions to others. I don't care for that RAPP, ARPP, or any other pan Russian penguin on TV. It's their politics and they decided to give us their own. I'll vote for our local solutions and our ideas, the carpenter said. Everyone speaks as if the winter was harshest at their home, and they're right. All the time. Uh, if I were to travel to their home for winter and ask to survive the frost, then I would most likely fall in the first couple of years. Some of my methods for survival would help, but I would. But would I be able to safely climb out of a mountain for spring water when we lived around forests our whole life? Would they be able to cut blocks from ice from the lake to ensure that they have water? I'm sure they would, given time. Exactly, they're to live here. Moscow is much more than 4,000 kilometers away, and it's inhabited and governed by Russians. They didn't give us the freedom to make our own laws in order to just copy their example. But the way, summer will come. I'll take all the food you need for the journey, which I'll walk and travel them for months. You'll only see Saka, and mostly you see our people. The lifestyle is our own to manage, and the land is our own to care for. And it's my human duty to vote for those who love the, this lifestyle and their land. I the wrongs. Uh, opportunity for all, and so on. There's no greater measure of uh, nation's freedom than the opportunity afforded to its citizens. As the right of all free men to be given a fair chance to succeed, however, the Federation continue to fall short of providing this right to this people. New public works programs and other means of lifting up those who struggle in the streets uh, are to be rolled out in the coming weeks. Uh, aid will be given to all those who struggle to feed themselves and their families, most of all the veterans left jobless in the wake of peace. As the Federation has reached its greatest potential, it must allow its citizens and people a chance as well. A trip to Barnall. Anatoly Gordon slowly withdrew with a small, crumpled note from his shirt pocket, barely out of its contents, and the dim light afforded to him by the moon moonlit night. Shukshin residence, room 18, room 19, no, 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 it's 18. We all start from somewhere, I suppose. Carefully inserting his rusty key into the apartment door, he didn't know what to expect, stepping into the darkness. Certainly not the dozen or so boxes that had immediately collapsed on top of him upon making his entrance. Jesus Christ, that could have killed me. What the heck is he doing keeping all this trash here anyways? Does he always live like this? Flipping on the barely functioning light switch, he quickly realized why there was just so much trash. <coughs> the apartment was essentially a one-room flat. 
Made above small, woven, caught to the left, and his old wooden desk on the right, it didn't leave any real space for storage, much less of the hundreds and hundreds of letters that now scattered the cramped floor of the apartment. Well, I guess that adds up. Finding one single report out of this mess is going to take, uh, hours. Should have sent my secretary when I had the chance, Gorge and mumbles, just sifting through the pile after pile of desk-covered papers and an aimless search. Grabbing one envelope out of the stack, he examined its contents, curiously. A small handwritten note, accompanied by a crudely drawn man, presumably Shukshin, standing next to a family of three equally crude people. Dear Shukshin, my mom said, my dad likes you. I don't see him anymore, but if he likes you, then I like you too. Seeing the letter back in the box, he noticed another small a slip of paper inside the envelope. I returned over in a clear handwriting. Thank you. Our mending our wrongs. Our Federation is not a state without its flaws. We have committed many horrible acts in the pursuit of unified Russia, which many, many of which owned Pokrushkin in his sluggish reign. This was the most apparent in the early 60s, which during the socialist Narodnik movement was brutally and senselessly repressed with bloodshed all the while ignoring the needs of the people. Present Corrigan has dictated this sickening crime could not go unforgotten or untone for. Posthumous pardons and formal apologies to the victims of the crackdown are to be given effective immediately. This may not go over well the reactionaries of the Federation, but it's a moral necessity. We may never wipe the stain of our failures off our past, off our past, but we may attempt to seek forgiveness. Day the proud and the many. Hurrah! Ivan cheered as he raised a glass with his fellow soldiers of the 8th Battalion. It's been many years since they liberated Europe as comrades in arms, but their bond proved unbroken even as today as they gathered for drinks. Um, all around them were still bore the scars of war, some very literally, but others in less obvious ways. Two many of his brothers in arms still struggled to put food on the table, even still many years into peacetime. <coughs> the soldiers' cheers were cut short as attention became drawn to the TV in the corner of the room. President Corrigan was speaking at the press conference, so his words were barely audible in the, noise, the room's noise. Yvonne Scott began to return to his drink after all, for all the president's talk piece that he had never seen a modicum of respect. Given to those who fought to achieve it, but Corrigan's words caught his and his fellow men's attention. Starting today, I'll begin my, to institute a new public works initiative that will see implementation across the Great Federation with prior employment given to all our brave sons of Russia who fought and suffered for its freedom. Jobs and a fair wage cannot be denied to those in need of that sacrifice so much for the nation and we. The president, the president continued on, but the brief pause of silence here as the words fell as cheers and yells resumed. Many of the ex-soldiers still struggling cheered, even gave a raised glass and fierce salute to the screen, but there were many that did, not, did nothing but score on the announcement of wages, which would follow too for the announcement. Uh, Anatoly, an adamant member of the Kantorovich's DSPR, spoke up. How can they give us the payment of slaves? This is barely over half of what we are, were given in the service. Many in their room grumbled in agreement. After all, there was a point to be made, but others did not share their fence with the paycheck the president offered them. They've been looking for a way out of destitution, no matter what, or no matter how, and Corrigan had just given it to them. It may not have been perfect, but to the soldiers in the most dire need of a job, it hardly mattered. Yvonne decided to have to wait and see what came of it as he raised a glass to his president and went back to his drink. Hardly a blessing, but to them, close enough. And then the quest for peace. And ended jingoism, huh? Uh, president Corrigan has made an infinite, incredible strides in the struggle to bring peace to the world. The Federation now lies as part of the free world in earnest, and its economy and administration have become more free of unneeded control and regulation than ever. Russia has made great strides in becoming a free and more prosperous nation, but more so than ever. Some call the president's agenda untenable, nothing but an ideal that can ever see reality. But these naysayers have been unilaterally proved wrong. The Federation has risen to greater heights than ever, all without bloodshed, conflict, or unneeded, unneeded pain. President Corrigan continues to work towards the nation, and truly... World truly at peace, and that one thing remains, he's only getting started in energy jingoism, and thus a new swift sun rises. And I apologize for my many mispronunciations. Oh my goodness, it's so bad. But oh well. Hey, at least our debt GP ratio is almost, you know, like 50%. That's nice. Got some better guns. Semi modern infantry rifle, that's pretty cool. And energy jingoism. Hey, we did get 50%. Even though inflation's at really high. The debates were over, and all of his cabinet had already dispersed. President Anatoly Ivanovich Korogin stood and stared at the world's map in silent contemplation. Another day of bureaucrats, diplomats, and think tanks, all collectively working towards a simple goal, to remove war from every dictionary for eternal prosperous peace, and as he stared at the nations of the late 20th century, he felt the massive burden of the monumental task that awaited him and his followers. How does men teach the societies of East Asia to respect each other and work together after decades of false unity under a parasitic sphere draining their economy? How does one approach Africa or lands brutalizing our people's maimed or even based on commodities such as water were scarce and to be fought over? How does one trample and suffocate the twisted European nationals and the rose from the ashes of the abominable Einheit's back corpse? Is it possible to guide the pan-Arabian tendencies in the Middle East towards regional stability? How can you control and prevent other world superpowers from aggressively meddling with world affairs? And most importantly, how can one approach it all without sending a single soldier abroad? But Utopia is not built on hills of corpses, but that is the end, should be the official end for us in our campaign. Look at that, independent member of the OFN, very nice. Um, of both us playing as uh, Nova Sibirsk, really, Russia, uh, the Russian Federation, with the TNO Brave New World uh, Code Talker update, which has been fan fantastic I love what the devs have done. The devs have done a fan, fan, fantastic, incredible, awesome job with this, and I can't wait to see what they do in the future, because 
They've done a just great, great job. This guy looks really sad right here. But uh, yeah, let me know what you thought about the campaign and below as well. Because like, this is cool. Oh, they're, uh, they're observers, I guess. If they could, if that joined the OFN too, that'd be pretty huge. If we got Romania too, that'd be even bigger. But, you know, I really enjoy this. And I look forward to the future with uh, this sub mod and what the team has in store. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.